Estonia has been praised for the excellent uh, and leading role in e-governance and we have quite a, uh, examples uh, where with health system and digital health but also looking to Catalonia's uh, situation we have also something to learn and quite a bit to learn from Catalonia's uh, health solutions in, in, in digital and uh, in health applications. Estonia today is one of the most cost-efficient healthcare uh, systems, spending less than 7% from the GDP. Uh, uh, when uh, the European average is 10%, but uh, we have made a lot of uh, efforts to, to get to this level. So we conducted uh, successfully a hospital uh, optimization plan 20 years ago which actually enabled us to improve and concentrate our investments. Uh, also, Estonia sees now that with the increasing uh, uh, workforce costs, we, we see that we have to revise a bit our financing system because of also the changing model. More and more people are self-employed and as Estonian healthcare Taxation is based on salary taxes, so there is a lot of discussions that, that we need to somehow increase the actually basis for the taxation to enable this type of system. But we are quite optimistic that we can enable to do this. In Estonia, we have following the principle uh, which is called opt-out. So by the law there is no need for each time for uh, health data secondary use to ask again a new informed consent from the data, uh, from the patient. But uh, uh, at the same time uh, we understand and everybody acknowledge that the health data are sensitive and delicate data. That's why we, we have to handle the data uh, very carefully and to secure that there will be no data leakage. Again, our e-governance system and our quite good uh, digital um, sort of knowledge and support uh, is enabling uh, data encryptions end-to-end -end if we have a data exchange and uh, in case of very sensitive data like uh, genomic data we have even specific law on uh, uh, genomic research which actually sets very high standards on data security. X-Road is a common data management system in Estonia which is quite unique. It enables to exchange data between different databases. So we don't have a huge public database which is centralized, but it's each authority or institution or ministry has its own data management system and databases, but they are actually brought together on the data exchange platform, which is called XROAD which means that uh, the, each data set has to uh, comply with uh, specific standards. But the data each time when it's used are actually inquired or required from the different databases and collected piece by piece in milliseconds. So each function when it's made some kind of inquiry like prescription then the system goes and collects data from different parts of all the uh, different databases, from uh, citizens' database, from the doctor's database, from the, from the uh, drug registry which is regi uh, registered in Estonia, uh, from the health insurance database. So it collects data and finally then forms based on this data uh, the uh, uh, prescription. So this will go for, in Estonia we have a principle that you need to collect or register data once. So there are no public uh, institution or agency 
is actually encouraged to ask you the same data several times. If you have already provided this data, this is, and government has this, then it's enough. And if you need to update, then it's another thing. But, and, and the principle is, it's uh, actually encrypted data exchange, but based on federated databases. It's, it's the same as for a whole Estonian um, a, a governance system because uh, it's everything's based on the unique identification uh, uh, number which the person gets uh, at birth and all information can be connected to this identification number. So it's immediately you can identify a person based on this number because there is a special uh, uh, functional tools like we call it, uh, it's uh, uh, mobile ID or ID card based uh, identification which can be used each time when person logs in. You don't need any passwords, you have just two uh, 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 pin codes. Everybody, pin one means that it's a four digit number what you uh, uh, um, type in when you are um, logging in to the special functions and pin two when you are approving, when you're signing. And the same is for, for the healthcare that all the time when a person logs in, the system knows that this is you. And this is a basic. So. Well, you never can have uh, enough inter interoperability. This is a problem. This is a clear standard. And in healthcare, to reach interoperability, it's a several layers. One thing is you have actually the technical interoperability. I mean, you have standards. But to standardize or normalize the data to be interoperable, to actually the content to standardize it, this is the biggest challenge and we have a long way to go to reach that. So we have some elements already achieved, but this is just a starting point. If you start from opportunities, then there is opportunity, which is a main, from, for the primary health data use, where people could actually freely take the data with them when they are traveling across the European Union. That is makes really the mobility reality in, in, uh, in practical terms if, you, if we speak about healthcare services or accidents or whatever. Or to prescribe, to get and can exercise a prescription across. Uh, if you take the, the secondary data use, then the limit is the sky. If, if you take what we could do with the, uh, if we could actually get and un uh, unify as a little part of the health data, how much research you can achieve if you add genomic data there, uh, you can actually develop drugs, you can develop a new modalities, you can actually prevent, uh, get a better prevention. So you just name it. So uh, I think there's a situation now where you have maybe more advanced countries in this, like Nordic countries, where you have more, maybe Catalonia is one of the countries which is, is more ready to, to the, for this, and then maybe your countries which is more sort of uh, the, uh, uh, systems with more silos, like in, in Germany today. Uh, the other question is, what are the hazards? And the hazards are, of course, is population is accepting this. The problems and risks with data, data security. If you get, make it available, there is always prob possibility that, that you, there can be a higher big scale data leakage which can be used for not good uh, 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 aims. And uh, of course, the problem is that the healthcare has been and is still 
uh, not the common European level issue. Each uh, healthcare, health, if, if each member state is organizing the healthcare, regulating the healthcare a quite different way. And uh, this means that we have a long way to actually reach to this kind of interoperability and level and common understandings. Let's take alone, take alone the uh, issue of, of informed consent, if I said that we in Estonia and the Nordic countries have been using an uh, approach of opt-out. Then in some countries in Europe the, uh, the main principle is that you have to ask uh, informed consent each time if you want to use the data uh, or include the patient's data to the secondary use in even in anonymous ways. So this I see, so we have to find to the unanimous uh, solutions in uh, European Union the, the, the common uh, uh, minimal uh, denominator. So what we can actually, what is a shared values for each member state and the bigger member states have even more complexity where you have a different administrative structures and borders inside your country. So, and the other part is that uh, we might have a solution and we already see that some group of fast movers can get some more advanced uh, common uh, functionalities in data sharing. This is probably the solution and the, the future what we see, but otherwise it's a never-ending process because you can always get a better coordination and, and better systems. Mm -hmm.